This is Kat Sturtz from rockingyourpath.com with another episode of Fast Action Fridays. Today, my special guest is Barbara Trapp, who is a certified professional organizer, something I will never be, and a productivity and life coach. Welcome to the show, Barbara. We are going to be talking about a really twist on organizing. And this is something that caught my eye on your website. And that is frugal clutter. And the fact that frugal clutter is still clutter. And how do we get in the framework to get rid of this stuff? (laughs) So before we head into that, can you tell everybody a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, Well, I've been doing this uh, full time since 2016, and my company is Zen Your Den. I felt that was a very peaceful, um, just makes you think of peacefulness in your surroundings, and I just thought it kind of fit. Mm -hmm. So so I have Zen Your Den and Zen Your Biz, so because I do work for residential and, um, and business as well. But as a certified professional organizer, that's actually through NAPO, the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. There's actually a test. I um, have to go to a school and get it proctored and everything. And I needed to have at least 1,500 hours of paid time um, doing organizing. And I got that certification a couple years ago. So um, I love what I do. And I've been doing it virtually, totally virtually since mid-March like a lot of people. (laughs) I think that's amazing. And for people who work for ourselves from basically a home office, we've Mm -hmm. been able to do virtual coaching and consulting work and helping clients uh, virtually in a number of ways for quite a while. So it it always makes me smile when some um, other companies that were strictly brick and mortar are finding out that, yep, they can do things virtually, that, yep, employees can be trusted to do their job and maybe not have to come onto the provinces. I need to clarify something for listeners and followers. It's not that I'm not organized. Followers know that I teach my own version of organizing and filing systems. It's just that the confines of professional organizing kind of just doesn't fit my quirky nature any more than being a traditional teacher in a school system would fit me, though I loved being a substitute teacher. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into our topic at hand. What the heck is frugal clutter? And what is the difference between that and our run of the mill clutter? Uh, Well, frugal clutter, I kind of describe it as things that you're saving just because I don't think you should throw it out. Um, Maybe there's a purpose for it in the future. It's wasteful to get rid of things. Just like my grandmother used to save all those little green plastic baskets that fruit would come in like strawberries. And she had stacks of them in her pantry filling up the shelves. And I know we could use those shelves for something else. Um, I also know somewhere in my mother's house, there is a darning um, mushroom. People (laughs) used to darn socks. And I know I'm going to find it. I'll know what it is. My daughter would never know what that is. Nobody darns socks. I don't know of anybody who does. Um, But but yeah, it's like I know what it is. (laughs) Yeah, Okay. (laughs) Dating myself too. But you know, it's also like all those extra little Tupperware containers or plastic tubs we save from margarine or yogurt containers and they fill up, you know, a whole cabinet and it's just like, uh, it feels wasteful to get rid of it. So, yeah. yeah. So those things have value. We can see a legitimate purpose for them, but they're holding us back in some other way by holding on to them in our lives. Either we could use the space better. Sure. Is that the idea? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, if you think of it, I, I kind of think that anything that I have needs to earn its its uh, square footage, because everything you know is taking up square footage in your home. And is it earning its space? What else could you put there? Um, or could it, does it have a higher purpose? Like you know, 
um, recycling. That's, you, you know, a lot of these things you can still recycle. So that's, that might be a good option too. Yeah, especially for the things that are plastic um, and a lot of the containers. Uh, glass is a little harder to recycle in our area because there is no recycling center for glass that's convenient close by for us. And you can't put glass in our neighborhood trash pickup. You, you know, right. Which and I don't get, but I guess I kind of understand their their philosophy. Yeah. Um, I know but the area is different with recycling. So it's important to find out what your lo local recycler can take and can't. Some can't take the caps off of water bottles. Others can't, they can't do the wire hangers because it can get into the gears of the equipment um, and can't take plastic wrap and stuff like that. So, right. When we're limited to number one and two plastics here. So yeah. Um, yeah. we can take it to a bona fide recycling center that's about a hundred, you know, maybe 50, 60 miles away, but that's extra effort. Yeah, then so, you're, you're wasting gas. <laughs> exactly, unless it happens to be on our way somewhere else and then I usually forget to bring it with me. Right. So right. I'm guessing we all have frugal clutter yeah. and I do not like to waste things. I mean, my husband and I are the type that when we get to the bottom of a skin lotion, that we like, you know, we're the type that cuts it off to make sure you get every little drop out of it. And I recently was gifted a lot of um, brand new and barely used uh, toiletries uh, from a friend uh, whose wife had passed. Mm -hmm. And th some of these were really high end brand names and I just couldn't bring myself to, to just throw them out. So what I did was I put them on a shelf and made myself use those no longer holding on to the really nice things for someday mm -hmm. you know use right, the nice right. stuff and thought of her in uh you know with gratitude for our friendship that we had and actually use those things up what are your tips for <laughs> dealing with this <laughs> sure well, um, actually, as a specific example related to things like, you know, toiletry items, especially the small ones that you collect in the hotel rooms or whatever, they can really use that at some of the homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. um, so one in particular, they need the small sample size. And then there's a woman sh shelter that, that needs full size. So there's probably a lot of resources in your area that you just, you know, haven't tapped into yet where they can use those things. Um, I found a whole big bag of those in a client's closet and he did a lot of traveling for, for work. And when I mentioned that option to him, he was thrilled. And the, the local um, homeless shelter that I brought them to was really grateful as well. And um, even down to dog food. I mean, there are homeless people with, with pets with them and uh, they can always use, you know, the things that your dog doesn't like. Maybe it doesn't like a certain snack or something, but there's so many different ways to, to use things again or get rid of them. And by the way, I always tell my clients, they ask me, well, how much is it going to cost me? How much do I need to spend on supplies? And I said, don't buy anything yet. Let's see what we can use in your home first. Exactly. And we often don't have to buy anything. Um, we kind of shop throughout the house and find what we need there. Exactly. I know our local food pantries also take those small uh, shampoos and conditioners and um, various other items that you use primarily when you're traveling. Yeah. 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 There's a mindset involved, especially when it comes to frugal clutter. Can you address that a little bit? Um, I think it could be, well, again, we're just afraid of wasting. Um, you know, it's not just the money, but just feeling guilt about getting rid of something. And I think it's always easier to let go of something if you know where it's going to. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, clothing or something else. Some people say, I don't want to just give it to goodwill. Um, but if you give it to somebody, you know where it's going and you know where it's going to be, you know, used. And, and that's part of the issue, I think, is, you know, where it's not being in the know of how, how it's going to benefit somebody. So if you do some of the research in your local area and see who might need it or just post it on Facebook or, uh, you know, a swap 
um, social media site or something, um, you'll find somebody that way, maybe through free cycle. So yeah. I, I think it's just, you know, a lot of guilt in letting go of things, but also um, there's also some theory about getting rid of something that belongs to, let's say a parent who's passed away. And a lot of the thinking is, well, if I get rid of this, I might forget them, or I might forget that moment that this item reminds me of. Um, but you're not going to, it's just, it's just a thing. And, you know, we can't take anything with us when we go. Um, but we can certainly save our relatives um, by letting go of some of those things first on our own. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you hit the nail on the head with that guilt um, and, and the memory connection. When you look at that item, even if it's been at the back of your closet for 20 years, when you finally get to it, it brings back that flood of memories and you're holding on to the memory uh, in the form of this physical thing that's taking up space and cluttering up your now life. Yeah, absolutely. We are recording this during coronavirus times here in the U.S., which means for many of us that a lot of our donation centers are either closed or are not taking certain things. Me personally, my item that I like to hold on to, but I also like to donate are books. But my local library has suspended all donations of books right now. Um, I don't want to sell them. I have this thing. I can't sell a book to somebody else, but I'm happy to give them a book. Right. It's weird. Can you... Do you have tips for us for dealing with that when some of the places we would normally use to donate uh, and feel good about doing that? What, what, what can we do in these times? Sure. Um, and I can even address books specifically. I was helping somebody downsize um, from their, um, their mother's house and ended up with 11 boxes of books. And we decided, okay, let's go ahead and try the local bookstore, use bookstore and see what happens. Um, I think they took half a box <laughs> out of 11. <laughs> and that was a lot of effort for me to be lugging things in and then lugging them all back out again. Um, so what I did find was that schools especially can use books that have, that are older, that have maps that are historical because students need them for reference and they're always looking for those types. Um, I found, so I did split some up and take some to local schools, but I also put some in a box outside um, my house and I called up uh, for a donation pickup, but I let my neighbors know what was out there. And it was interesting, uh, neighbor kids came over and they took all the art and history books. So it was, that was really kind of cool to see. They, you know, they, they had a value on them. And I, I think hardly anything was donated. Um, there's also those cool little free little libraries that pop up here and there. And, you know, you can stick a couple books in there as well. Um, but just when my clients were so motivated to clear out in March and April and they couldn't take things anywhere, I gave them two solutions. I said, this isn't what I'd recommend all the time, but find a place in your garage, bag everything up and put it there <laughs> until we, until things are open where we can take place, uh, take things places or put things in your trunk because nobody was traveling. So <laughs> I said, just fill your trunk up the back seat, your car, whatever. The main thing is to get it out of your house so you can feel the difference and just, you know, just see some of your handiwork. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed on your website, I forgot which blog post it might have been, um, but kind of the rule of thumb is once you've decided it's you're not keeping it, do not bring it back into the house. <laughs> right. Absolutely not. And um, when I'm going through clothing with a client, at least when I was in person, um, my system would be that I would hold it up and have them kind of stand back a little bit because once you touch something you feel more of a connection and you can be a little bit more objective when you're looking at things from a distance. So sometimes that's when a, you know, an extra person can kind of come in handy that way. I hadn't heard that one before, but I could see that being really, really helpful, yeah. especially for clothing items. 
Mm -hmm. um, and maybe some knickknacks too. And mm -hmm. just to clarify what I mentioned, not bringing things back into the house uh, and putting them back away. <laughs> if, yeah. if it's a box and it's staying shut. So I have boxes that are ready uh, and bags that are ready to be donated. Mm -hmm. The rule is I'm not opening those again. There's a date on them of when they were sealed Good. or a date that if this date comes and we haven't used anything in that box, we're not opening the box to see what's in it. It's just going. We know we've already made the decision. We can let that go. Oh, that's awesome. Is that yeah. a good one? Yeah, I like that. And I have three questions that you can ask yourself, especially especially with clothes or you know anything else that you're hesitating on. And first question is, if I didn't already own this, would I buy it now? Mm -hmm. Second question is, um, if I didn't already own this, how much would I pay for it? And then the third would be, when is the next time I'm going to use this? So um, if you don't use it by that time, you set that time, then, you know, you probably don't want or need it. Yeah, I love those three questions, especially the, those first two. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, you're, if you wouldn't buy this, <laughs> yeah, why are you holding on to it? Right. <laughs> And I always try to avoid asking the question why, but when is a little bit softer. Right. So less judgmental. And it takes care of that, how long you've had something, because that's, to me, that's not a really good gauge about whether or not you should let go of it. I have some clothes from 20, 30 years ago that I love. I Some of them I haven't worn for many years, but they have a particular purpose. They're either character community theater purpose clothes, or mm -hmm. they're that little black dress or, or an outfit for a funeral or a special event, or maybe when I'm traveling, it's the, my go-to travel outfit. And like you said, we mm -hmm. haven't been traveling much. Um, right. So the age of the item is not really a good identifier about whether you should keep it or not. Would right. you agree with right. that? Oh, absolutely. And I would just say, you know, put those things, those special event um, clothing, you know, clothing items, maybe in another closet or at least at the back. Doesn't mean you have to, you don't have to get rid of it if you haven't worn it in six months. We have too many of those odds and ends things that you need to have for a special occasion. Um, so that's okay. Just kind of put them out of sight or somewhere else where they aren't taking up your valuable space now. Yeah. I tried that one tip about turn, turning hangers turning the hangers. opposite way. Hated that. Hate, that hated that method because there were things that I knew I did not want to get rid of because they were either seasonal or just occasional rare, uh, but seeing them backwards. Yeah, I didn't like that either. So <laughs> oh, I did what you said is is store them separately from the rest of the things like things that I'm keeping only right. because they would be good for community theater um, costumes or mm -hmm. something like that are in a special uh, wardrobe downstairs and other things that are occasional right. are in their own area in my closet with the hangers turned the normal way. <laughs> Right, right. So just to clarify, the thing with the hangers turn different ways. One of the theories is you take, put all your clothes so the hangers are backwards. And then as you use them, you're going to put them back on the right way. And then after a few months, you see what you haven't touched, which hangers are still backwards. Another trick uh, flip on that is to, um, as you wear and clean things and put them back, just keep putting them back at the front and then look to see later what's at the back and then mm -hmm. consider those pieces of clothing and think, hmm, are these all, are these some of these special occasion or do I just never want to wear these again? Yeah, uh, I like that. And I like not holding on to clothes other than maybe one size up, one size down yes. that you think you're going to fit into someday. Right. Because right. if you get to the point where you are a different size on purpose, especially on purpose, yeah. you're going to want new clothing. <laughs> you're going to want to exactly. celebrate that moment, not just get into something you had. Yeah. I, I hear so many clients say, oh, I just want to be able to fit in my old clothes. And then when they finally do, they realize they're old clothes <laughs> and they do deserve something new. 
So yeah, <laughs> get new clothes. As we get close to wrap up, what is the number one th piece of advice you would give someone to help them get rid of their stuff, <laughs> especially their frugal clutter? I know, you know, um, I think those three questions are helpful there. But again, thinking of, you know, the square footage of your home, thinking, is this stuff earning its space? Mm. Um, it, you know, it, how much does it cost to store this? What's the square footage cost of my home? And, you know, is this, is this earning this, the space? But another one, just since we're coming up to the holidays, a lot of people have guest rooms and I say, you know, if you want to have a guest lots of times during the year, that's great. But if you need an office or a workout space or something else, think about your home and what the greatest purpose is for each room. And I like to tell clients, if you haven't moved into your home yet, it was totally empty. How would you use this space now? And that can really help you rethink what you store where and how much. Um, so something that about. that's a brilliant uh frame of mind to yeah. consider i really like that one well thank you barbara for spending time with me today you've given me some ideas of what else i can declutter from my own home and i hope listeners and followers uh, have gotten ideas too um she's got a free resource for us and make sure to check the description area, either on the blog post or if you're watching this on YouTube in the description area there for how to access that. Thank you again for being with me. Thank you so much for having me. And this is Kat Sturtz, closing another episode of Fast Action Fridays. Remember to join me next week when I have another great guest. Until then... Remember to keep rocking your unique path to success. Bye-bye.